Today we will be farming the Ion Jaw Basilisk for 10 hours. Before that though, my name is Crixus8 and I will be the new host for the Gaming Curious WoW channel. I've taken over from Remus as the new host of this channel since he's moved on to other projects. I've been playing WoW for just over 10 years and I'll be continuing where Remus left off with 10 hours of farming videos. I'll also be doing a lot more farming related content and some general WoW videos such as class guides, PvE and PvP content and guides as well as some general WoW and WoW gold making videos. So if you want to see what this Stranglethorn Vale farm can do then make sure to stick around. As I said the farming spot we're looking at today is in Stranglethorn Vale inside the Crystal Even Mine. It's just northeast of the Gurubashi Arena in Stranglethorn Vale. And the things that we're going to be killing today are the Iron Jaw Basilisks, which are around level 43 to 45. The Basilisks are very easy to kill for any class. The only ability which you really need to worry about is their stun. However, it's not that hard to counter. If you're out of their range, which is pretty small, roughly 5 to 10 yards, then it won't hit you. So as a general strategy for killing them, all you need to do is attack them like normal, and then when they start casting their stun, move out of their range and you're good to go. The Basilisk will drop 5 grey items, is, and this is what we'll be making the bulk of our gold from in this farm. The items are the large basilisk tails that sell for 7 silver and 13 copper, the squishy basilisk eyes which sell for 6 silver and 76 copper, basilisk heart which sells for 10 silver and 13 copper, the prismatic basilisk scale which sells for 12 silver and 96 copper, and finally the wicked claw which sells for 5 silver. These are all useless, so to make gold out of these it's a simple case of just selling them to vendors. With these items we can make around roughly 8 to 15 gold depending on how fast and efficiently you clear the mine. So considering that we will be collecting a lot of loot from here and we want to keep it all to be able to sell to vendors then make sure you come here with as empty bags as possible because they will start to fill up really fast. Especially if we have mining and skilling in skinning, sorry, but this is something we'll discuss in a few minutes. We also in this mine come across a rare spawn called Scale Belly, if I remember that correctly. This is a huge basilisk basically and it spawned for me twice in 10 hours of farming, which is roughly 1 in 5 hour, uh, 1 spawn per 5 hours. Even though the first time it spawned for me was actually in my first 25 minutes of farming. This can drop some the same grey items as mentioned before, however it also drops some gear. I managed to get a chromatic sword from this the first time I killed it. And this weapon on my server is selling from anywhere between 10 and 25 gold. So make sure if you see it you kill it because if you get a good drop from it, you can boost how much gold you're getting by quite a lot. One of the perks of this farming location is its ease of entry. You don't need to be a literal AoE god frost mage to make this farm work. Literally any class can do it. Another good thing about this farming spot is the amount of mithril and iron nodes. They're literally everywhere in this mine. Mithril ore on my server is down for 5.5 silver roughly and iron ore is going for 5 to 10 silver. So if you're a miner then this is going to be massively better farm for you. However, since we are killing basilisks, they are skinnable, which means we can get leather drops from it as well. On my server, thick leather is going for around 7 to 10 silver. Now we can be killing up to 1 to 200 mobs an hour, depending on how fast we are killing these. Maybe even more to be honest. So the leather that you can farm in here is actually nuts. On top of all of this, we have chests as well inside this mine. 
There are around five locations that I noticed for the spawns, and they just switch between each spawn every time you loot one. They drop around five to ten silver each, and they drop health and mana potions, as well as a chance for green gear and some random food and drinks. So for the potions and the green gear, make sure you check them on auction house before sending them or selling them to a vendor, because you could get some really nice profits out of them. So if you guys want to do this farm and you're wondering why you should do it and how, then let's talk about it. First, why would you want to do this farm? I would recommend this farm if you're still leveling. There are 100% better farms to do if you're level 60 like me. However, if you're getting XP while farming here, it's even more valuable. So this farm really sees good results when having skinning and mining as well. So if you're leveling and you have skinning and mining, then make sure you go and level up your skin and mining enough to be able to actually do it in this mine. This will change the farm from a 9 to 15 hour gold per hour farm into 20 to 35 gold per hour farm, which is pretty good for being level 4. Also, one of the things I haven't talked about yet is the amount of people contesting this zone. This is probably one of the number one reasons I would say to do this farm. In 10 hours of farming here, I've seen only 5 alliance players and 3 horde players. I killed the 3 horde players and the 5 alliance players didn't stick around for more than 20 minutes in total. The alliance players that I seen coming were mostly skinners coming for a few minutes here and there, however even with the skinners that are coming here. If they see you in the mine, they will most likely just leave you alone since just outside of the mine there are a bunch of things that they can skin. So there's no point for them to fight with you for this loot. Lastly we'll talk about how you can farm here efficiently. It's pretty easy, there's nothing really complicated about it to be honest. All you're going to do is run in circles for however long you want to farm, that is it. In other mine and either take the left or the right path and just keep going around in circles. If you're a single target damage dealer like a warrior or paladin, then you don't have to worry because you can basically pull every single mob in this at one at a time, so you don't need to worry about dying. However, if you are an AoE god frost mage like myself, then you don't need to worry either. This cave can be pulled with four to five pills. So this dramatically increases the efficiency of the farm and the respawn so fast that even if you are AoE pulling them, you're not going to run out of mobs. By the time you get to the your starting point, they will respawn again. Even me pulling at a level 60 AoE farming, I've rarely had to wait on spawns. So let's now take a look at some of the highlights from my 10 hours of farming here and then we'll look at the results from me selling everything. Alright guys, so let's have a look at what we made in 10 hours of farming. So for the Lodge Basilisk Tales, we got 302. 
We got 290 of the squishy basilisk eyes. We got 90 of the basilisk hearts. 70 prim, uh, sorry, pr prismatic basilisks. I can't say that word apparently. And then we got 36 wicked claws. Now, I did manage to find a rare drop. Um, as you've seen, the first rare that I killed, I got the um, charismatic sword. So that sold um, on the auction house. So it's up for anywhere between 10 and 25 gold. I got mine away for 15. So, as we are selling everything here, let's go over the income that I actually managed to make from this. Now, remember, again, this is without me collecting every chest. This is without me having mining. And this is without me having skinning. So these numbers can be a lot higher if you actually got all of those things. But I started out with 72 gold. The weapon sold on auction house for 15 gold, 10 silver. All the greys and everything that I sold, the rest of the green gear that I got, sold for 79 gold. So that brings us to a total of 94 gold that we managed to make. That, obviously, within 10 hours, is an average of 9.4 gold every hour, which is rather slow for this farm, to be honest. You could do a lot better. Um, I was doing a mixture of AoE pulling and single target pulling, as well as taking breaks to go get food and stuff like that. So you can do this a lot better than how I optimized it. And again, I will just say, please, Use this spot if you've got skinning and mining because you'll push that number up two or maybe even three times the amount that I did. So, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and comment down below where I should farm next for 10 hours. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Again, my name is Craig Sassay. Have a good day.